I work with middle class people. Mm-hmm. Uh, most people don't realize that they're making too much money to be freaking broke. <laughs> we live in the richest country in this dadgum country. Yeah. Or in this world. Mm-hmm. Uh, that people are barely skating by paycheck to paycheck. They can't figure out why. Mm-hmm. What I have to do is take them back to high school where they should have learned this stuff. Right. Okay. Uh, teach them fundamentals, budgeting, mindset. Mm-hmm. Throw that YOLO lifestyle out the stinking window. Mm-hmm. You know, you only live once. Right. Okay. These people have to think about they're teaching their children how to, how to spend money. Mm-hmm. All right. So. I have to, first of all, they have to want to be there, okay? It's like a, like, like AA. You have to want to be in those meetings. Right. Okay? Or it's just a, it's just something that you're going through the motions to make the judge happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, I've got background in law enforcement for anybody that's, I'm a, I'm a full-time police officer. I do this part-time. Um. Uh, so I, I know a little bit about people and, and bad situations, which is also a motivation for me to do what I do because right. I, I've been in houses where dudes have beat the crap out of their wives and it all started over a money fight when there was alcohol involved, you know, and it just spirals out of the control. Right. So I, I, I want to be there to help these people. I want to change the whole freaking world, man. It's like we were talking before, before we we uh, started recording here. That if if you don't aim for nothing, yeah. that's exactly what you're going to hit. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm I'm aiming as high as I can. I think for me, the part that uh, took the longest was I knew that I wanted to do more than most. I didn't know exactly what that criteria was at the time, um, and I I worked many different business models and work for other people and I was never satisfied with that and when I got into uh, finding my purpose you know no matter what I did and when I raised my hand about understanding no matter how much money you make uh, there was a point that I chased the dollar and what I mean by that is I thrive to make over a hundred grand a year like that I was not going to work anywhere that I didn't make six figures plus and I thought that was important well, I was proved through society that it wasn't. And what I mean by that is, is even though I made $130,000 a year, if you called me up and said, man, I, I really can't pay my house payment this month, would you have an extra 600 bucks? When I had actually had to realize that I didn't have an extra $600 and I cleared over $130,000 a year, that's a problem. That's a real problem. And... When you get to that point, it doesn't matter how much money you make, you will never have enough until you realize that you're either going to have to make a whole bunch of money and be a real, and you just can't spend it fast enough, or you learn the models that you're teaching to preserve that money. Do you really need to have uh, this much expenditures? You know, do you need to spend this much money? And those are the things that. Uh, everybody I think needs to understand is because what I do now today is I prefer or provide passive income wealth to accredited investors and I help people become wealthy preserve that wealth where you on that other hand are important that get people to that part of their life and yeah it, it is very important to know where you want to go when I have an investor on what is your purpose do you want cash flow replacement? Do you want long-term wealth? Do you want a retirement for your kids? That's important. Just like trying to dig into the gentleman that's without a home right now, that is, you really have to dive into that because I think at that point, they have to answer that question. Well, I am in this position because, and I think they have to hear themselves say that. Yeah, 
that, that was kind of building on what I was saying earlier. You have to have the vision. You have to see what you want three months to look like from now. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to another guy that's in a similar situation today, just chatting on Facebook Messenger. I'm like, dude, so where do you want to be in three months? Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to be financially independent. Okay, great. But what's that look like to, for you? Mm-hmm. You know, do, do you want to do you want to be in an apartment? Do you want to be in a home? Yeah, obviously the home's not going to happen in three months. But right, you have to you have to have goals in your mind where you want to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you do you want to be able to afford a six pack instead of a just a, a forty? I, I don't know what he's thinking. Right. Yeah, you know. So yeah, and uh, also to to build on something else that you said you were talking about, you can't make enough money if you don't get your get your mind right, learn how to handle it. Uh, I used to listen to Dave Ramsey a lot. Okay, I'm going to give him a little a little shout right now. He always said, "You can't out earn your stupid." No, no. You have to. You've got to learn how. Um. This is subtracted from your income a month ahead of time. Mm-hmm. If you don't. I promise you won't even know where your money went. That's that's a true statement. You know, Yeah. Um, my dad, I think this is a good place to insert this right here. My dad asked me one time, he goes, son, I really wish you'd get lucky enough you could win the lottery. And I said, no. No, I said, I wouldn't need that kind of problems. And he said, huh? And I said, no. I said, dad, I said, people that win the lottery, they screw their whole life up. And he goes, well, explain a minute. And I said, look, Dan, I said, if I won $30 million and and that 30 million after everything was done, I got $15 million. I never had $15 million beyond before that point. I wouldn't know how to handle the taxes. I wouldn't know how to keep the people off my front doorstep. I wouldn't know how to, how do I say this? I wouldn't know how to, Spend Handle the yourself money wisely. You know, yeah. I would go blow it on a, a mansion, you know, for say, and a sports car and everything else. When it comes time to license a sports car, I'm out of money. When it comes time <laughs> to pay taxes on the mansion, I don't have any. It's about building wealth preservations to get to that point. Yeah. You know, somebody that had $15 million and lost it all, well, he had the education to gain that back wisely. You know, he earned that much money over a period of time. By winning the lottery, you got problems you never wanted before. Yeah, uh, I've heard it said that a person with a, if if you were in that situation, you got a bunch of money, you're just going to be more of what you already are. Yeah, yeah, it just amplifies it. Yeah, yeah it if you if you're problem. already a jerk, you're going to be a really rich jerk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you're if you're stupid, you're going to be a really rich stupid person. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I can say today. Uh, you know, with pride, I can say this. I've built my education around to where if I lost absolutely everything, completely everything, all the way down to my clothes, I believe I have enough education that I'd be a millionaire in a year again. Because now I know the skills. I know how to retain my wealth, grow my wealth, and make sure I find the right people to get there. And I think it takes everybody starting from being broke to go to that point. I really do. Yeah. The education that you don't get in school that I always preach about is is key to everything like that. You have to you have to know what you're doing. You have to surround yourself with with people that you want to be like. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know that's that's kind of why I've buddied up to you and uh, a couple other people. Well, it's this way. Ryan, if, if five of our friends smoke, we're going to be number six and number seven. <laughs> and, and if if six of our friends are broke, we're going to be number seven, number eight. Yeah. That's just all there is to it. You yeah. are who you surround yourself with. If you read poor books, you're going to have a poor mindset. You have to read books that grow you. I believe everybody should get out of school as fast as they can get out of school. I would not recommend college unless you're going to do accounting. That's the only uh, college class I would take would be accounting 
or business of some site that has an accounting class. And then I would read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And yeah, I've heard about that too. I, I really haven't read it yet. I've read Total Money, Total Money Makeover. Yep. Dave Ramsey's book, a couple of his books. I'm not a Dave Ramsey fan. <laughs> He's a great guy. He has yeah. a lot of good points, but uh, when it he doesn't use um, debt for leverage, and that's my only thing. He's he's a he teaches people to be afraid of debt, but at the same time, I think that starting out, people probably do need to be afraid of debt because they go overboard with it. They don't know how to use it in the right way. They don't know how to use it as leverage. They use it as to go buy a new truck and go buy a new boat and go buy a sports car and everything else. And they don't have the systems in place to be able to afford that debt. Um, when my debt is used, it's paid by other people. You know, uh, tenants pay for my debt. Um, customers pay for my debt, stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, we can, have, I, I mean, I'll, I'm not playing on your level. I've got no, no, uh, no business to, to speak to anything you're saying in a negative way. I mean, you, you're <laughs> well, killing, you're killing it, dude. No, I, mean, I, I just, I don't, that. I don't have that, that skill set to, well, uh, to do it, that. You'll so. get there. Read Rich Dad, <laughs> Poor Dad's going to be first step. But uh, just to get back to it, man, the value that you add to other people is tremendous. And I would like you to walk through, you know, a financial go through one of your best clients without giving them the name away of what you've coached them on. Give them kind of oh, a yeah. platform. Let's do yeah, that. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. All right. I, the first one pops up in my mind is a, is a, a friend of mine. Okay. Okay. Uh, this guy, is, they're, they're living paycheck to paycheck. They're making almost three times the money I do mm-hmm. as a police officer. Okay. And I, I make it mm-hmm. without the coaching income. I was making it. Right. All right. So, the first thing that I do is after I make contact, we, we chat a little bit is I'll, I'll teach, I'll send you some, some information on budgeting. Yes. All right. Cause that, that is absolutely fundamental. First step mm-hmm. is making a budget mm-hmm. because if you don't have a budget, you don't have any money to, to put on things that you need. Cause like I said, a while ago, if, if you don't make a budget, the money's going to go away before you get it. You won't know what happened to it. Right. So things that you need to put in your life to make yourself financially stable aren't going to be possible. Mm-hmm. All right. So if, if a, after we got him on a budget and he was like a thousand dollars in the, in the green after that. Okay. I mean, dude was spending $30 a day at the gas station on, Tobacco, energy drinks, uh, jerky. And he'd, he'd go in there buy his his stinking lunch for the day and his breakfast before he went to work mm-hmm. at the gas station. Okay, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. So we, we we get through that and he, he's got all this money left over. All right. So then I do a financial needs analysis. Mm-hmm. Okay, with the software that I use, uh, it identifies a multitude, maybe 15, 20, it depends on your situation, of different talking points that I can go through. And okay, it, it's kind of like if you go to a, 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 a financial needs restaurant, okay, mm-hmm. you're going to sit down, I'm the waiter, I'm going to bring you a menu. Mm hmm. After you answer all these questions on the software, you've got a menu in front of you, okay? Mm-hmm. And you get to pick what you want to do. Right. All right. I mean, it, it can range anywhere from okay, you're you're a you're you're a parent and you got a kid, you don't have a will. All right, guess what? Guess what happens to your kids if you don't have a will? And you and, and both parents die. Mm-hmm. The judge gets to decide who takes care of your kids. People don't know that. Right. People don't think about that. People don't want to think about dying, but guess what? It's going to happen to all of us. You have yeah. to prepare. All right. And then uh, all the way to, you know, if you got $20,000 in a regular savings account, 
that money is going to waste. Okay, you could not not that a money market account's gonna make you rich. No. But you could have your emergency fund in a money market account. Right. Making three to five percent instead of a fraction of a percent mm -hmm. in your average savings account. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, I, you know, oh, here, here's another big one, man. It blow, it, it, I can't say it blows my mind because I've been there. I used to get a twelve thousand dollar tax check, mm -hmm. okay, but people don't realize that getting that kind of tax check means you're just sending your money to the government interest free. Yeah. Okay. And you could be using that five, six, seven hundred dollars, whatever it is. I, I'm, I'm not a, a, a human calculator, but that's a lot of money every month you could be using to, to work on your goals. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and then uh, another big one I saved, I've got the ability to uh, have auto and home insurance co rate comparisons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We, we contract most of these services out, but I have the ability to uh, initiate that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I saved this one family $720 a month. Jesus Christ, man. That's a paycheck. Yeah. Yeah. That company had them over the barrel and people don't even know that this is happening. They don't know it's possible. Mm -hmm. okay. well, I had one of my guys that worked for me. Um, he's like, man, I, I would love so much to have more money. And I'm not using the same program. I'm, I said, you know, well, I'm working on building this website at, uh, or internal calculator in one of our websites of what does it cost. And he goes, well, what do you mean by that? And I said, well, I would like you to be able to input, because he smokes. I said, what's a pack of cigarettes cost? And I said, three bucks? He goes, oh, God, no. They're five dollars a pack. And I said, they're five dollars a pack. And I said, how many packs do you smoke a day? He goes, um, two packs. And I said, so you're smoking two packs a day. Five, what, five, six days a week, seven days? Oh, at least seven days a week, sometimes three on, on the weekends. I said, wow. Okay. <laughs> I said, now, you always have a Red Bull in your hand, so what's that cost? And he's usually got the tall ones. Same thing, you know. And uh, he gives me that. Well, real quickly, I said, what else do you use um, that you probably don't need? He goes, well, I, I probably buy 30-pack a week. And I said, a 30-pack a week. Okay. So I said, real quickly, I just went up front. I jotted all, I was keeping mental track of what everything cost. And I just wrote it all down. And I said, dude, you're spending well over $150 a week. He said, that's $600 a month. And I said, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, sure enough. <laughs> and the same thing. He didn't even realize that he was spending that much money. He had no, there was no conscious of that because it's so easy to walk in a convenience store and swipe your debit card. Yep. It's so easy to walk into um, the grocery store and throw a 30 pack in the cart and you're not going to pay attention to it when the grocery bill is always already 130 bucks. Um, you're going to go to the grocery store real quick and get gas. You're going to pay for it and you're going to grab that tall Red Bull, and you're going to buy that. You, you ain't even going to take, pay attention to that when you're paying for it. And it adds up. It yeah. really does. <clears throat> yeah, that, that's one reason why I, uh, I advocate for the envelope system for people that are starting out, mm -hmm. putting and their cash in it. it it's uh, it, it's where you, you actually put cash into envelopes that are uh, designated for certain areas, mm -hmm. like like you're uh, eating out money mm -hmm. or your uh, any kind of any kind of thing you would spend cash on anything really when I first started every every single thing I spent money on that wasn't auto drafted was in an envelope yeah gasoline everything because mm -hmm. I was that that serious about getting my money stuff right well I can't tell you how much money I saved when COVID hit because I like I'm me and my wife are kind of a foodie we like to go out to eat. We got two kids. So after working all week, come Friday night, I want to go to a nice place to eat. So we go to Red Lobster. We go to Longhorn, wherever. And uh, I'm that guy that, you know, well, this child would like wings for an appetizer, and this child would like something else. So 
we blew 30 bucks on the appetizer before we even got started in the main course. Um, so when it comes down to it, hey man, I work hard for my money and whenever I want to spend it, I'm going to spend it. It was nothing to spend $100 to $130 every time we went out to eat. It wasn't hard. It really yeah. wasn't. By the time everybody got a drink and everything else and you left a nice tip, because I believe that leaving a good tip is important. Um, yes. You know, then you do yes, that two is. or three times a weekend. Holy cow. So COVID, <laughs> when COVID hit, it made me reevaluate my expenditures. And I went, we are spending a lot of money. Yeah, that's happened to a lot of people. I've heard that story more times than I can count. Really? Yeah. People can't, you can't go out. Where's all this money coming from? <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Check my tax or my check stub. I think I got a raise. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> really? Really? So do yeah. you teach people, uh, you mentioned getting a raise. Do you teach people when they get a raise to uh, set that raise aside? So uh, it, it really kind of depends on where they are. Okay. In their, in their journey, you know, if they've, if they've got debt to pay off, that that to me that's that's more important to pay off your debt, mm-hmm. because in in uh, in uh, middle class America, debt is just giving away your money to banks, and they use your money instead of you using your money. Mm-hmm. Okay, so for me, in in my place in life right now, having no payments mm-hmm. is extremely important. Mm-hmm. Okay, dude, I'm I'm a cop. I don't make a lot of money. Okay, I. I wouldn't be able to breathe if I had a car payment, truck payment. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, So if they've got debt, I say, yeah, they they need to be throwing that any kind of money like that at their debt or their investments or yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of play. It depends on what step you're in. Right. What phase, what phase of your journey you're in. Right. I didn't know if that's something that's in your program. Hey, you know, I got a, 3% 3% raise this year. Okay, we'll take that 3% and put that in an envelope. You know, every every week, every week, take that, take that 3% and put it in an envelope. I know like uh, the Grant Cardone model is, uh, you know, you live on the 60-40 and you live on the 40% and save the 60. Yeah. Now, that's some discipline, especially in today's day and age. Yeah, I mean, that kind of reminds me of what I'm doing right now. I, I, we're living off my police income, and I'm saving my coaching income mm-hmm. it, just to just to see what happens with it, you know? Oh, absolutely, yeah, for sure. Now, actually, I've got plans, but I'm not going to disclose. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in, and I've not been the best at it because I like to post on Facebook, but uh, grow in silence. Yeah. Grow yeah, in yeah. silence. Yeah, so after after we go through the, the software and identify all these needs that can or should be filled, mm-hmm. I can actually fill all of them. Right now, I'm working on my SIE, my Series 6, my Series 26, and eventually my 65 mm-hmm. uh, investing licenses. Mm-hmm. I'm not there yet, but I've got partners that are there, and they're going to do the same thing I would do. And. Well. Once you get your 65, circle back to me. And if you are register as an investment advisement company, uh, you could raise equity for my company. And uh, we pay you up to 3%, even 5%. And uh, most of the time, we don't raise anything less than $5 million. So, yeah, I mean, that just goes to show you why I was saying that there is no limit. No, there's not. And, you know, I have, we pay people all the time. In investment shops where I sign a, a dis- agreement that if they bring us $5 million, that I pay them 5% of that. And they're not doing anything besides calling their clients that have a lot of money and say, hey, I've got a guy that has got an opportunity. So It's amazing, man. Oh, one of the, when you get on the side of being um, self-employed or at least have enough of your time, Forgetting about how much you can physically make is what you need to do because there is no ceiling. There is none. Yeah. The only limit you put on yourself is, or you have is what you put on yourself, man, for oh, real. God, yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, I mean, that's something I put on Facebook the other day, and you know, like two people reacted to it. It was like, y'all need to have some vision on her. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it always seems um, people may like it, but there's also that crowd of people that won't like it because someone else might see that they like it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've thought about that too. Mm-hmm. I've been in that position back well, in my uh, prior days. <laughs> So also, you do life insurance as well? Yeah. Uh, so we, we only do term. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's, a, there's a reason for that is because I don't agree with the principles behind whole life mm-hmm. insurance. Okay. Um, I believe that you should buy the cheaper term life and invest the difference that you would be paying on the, uh, on the, the cash value in your whole life policy. Right. Um, yeah. I, I don't. I don't get why people don't get life insurance mm-hmm. or a lot of people don't know that having just group life insurance is really leaving you wide open for a, a very tragic event. Mm-hmm. Because if you're not on payroll, when you pass away, you don't have life insurance. Right. I mean, yeah, it's really cheap and it's cheap for a reason. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's like the liability of car insurance. Mm-hmm. It's a bare minimum just so you can say you got it. Right, but think about your your wife and your kids. Mm-hmm. What happens to them? What statistically, your wife will be homeless in six months. Oh yeah, the bank is going to take your house mm-hmm. because she won't be able to pay for it. Right, absolutely. And then I teach ten to twelve times the income because you pay off debt, pay off the house. You know, you got a single mom now with kids. Mm-hmm. She don't need debt. No, you pay off the house and and all the debt, and you invest the difference of the policy and that's your new income that you, you never replace dad or mom, but you can replace the income. If you know how to do it, you do it right. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's definitely needed and it's definitely things that people need to think about. You know, nobody likes to think about death, but at the same time we have to think about our loved ones. If something was to happen to us. And that, 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 that person that was killed on, over on a local highway the other day, they didn't expect to die. No, nope. you know nobody that dies when they're not ninety is expecting to die. No, not a bit. You know, and tragedy so it, happens every day, every hour. It really does. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it gives me goosebumps to think about it right now, man. It's just I, I, I've got a whole world of people that need me. Right. I believe that. Oh yeah, that's true. Absolutely true. That's why I don't feel bad about reaching out to people, talking to people. Mm-hmm. Even if they even if they blow me off, man, I'm doing what I have to do because yeah. I have to tell myself it's okay. You try it. Abs- yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. I and you gotta just keep going with it. And some people need to hear it more than two or three times. You just gotta keep coming back. Yeah. Just keep showing up, keep going after it every single day. And uh, you know, just like for what I do. I feel like people need to know the opportunities that we have. I feel like people need to hear what some of us have to say. And it's, it, is not, it should not be viewed as an egotistic speech. It should be viewed as, I'm trying to help you. There's a huge purpose behind what I'm trying to get across. It is not to make me rich. It is to help you, because that's what my mission is. If I get rich, everyone else gets rich. Yeah, and when I get rich, I donate to everything. It's just <laughs> I only keep so much. I invest back in my business, and I give the rest away. It's what I like to do. I love don- donating the St. Jude's. Very cool. And uh, I will not be satisfied until I'm doing probably every bit of uh, probably a million a month to St. Jude's. I think that yeah. that's just my target. And then you'll see that you could be doing more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And again, I'm like, okay, well, I'm capable. Yeah. I've hit this number. Uh-huh. Now what? And, yeah. you know, eventually uh, I said, okay, well, I want to donate a million dollars a year. Yeah, that, that could be achievable, but let's set the target higher. Let's, let's really stretch out what we can really do. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I got, I got goals like that too that are on a much, much smaller scale. Because I'm just starting out in this. Uh, you got to think big, man. 
You got this wealth, pick. this wealth gathering game. Mm-hmm. But you know, I'll get there yep. sooner sooner than later. I promise that. Absolutely, I'll be here with you at the top, man, all the way. Yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> well, is there anything else you know of that would uh, that would help people getting them a message? Yeah, they could seek me out on Facebook, and I can help them. And how do uh, they contact you through Facebook? Yeah, Ryan Furch on Facebook, just my okay. regular page. I don't have a business page. Okay. Uh, but it, my name's R Y E N F O E R T S C H, and uh, you can message me on there or text me at eight one two five four or eight one two seven one nine zero six five six, or email me at R Y E N five zero two at gmail dot com. Perfect. Yeah. And then the I've seen you wear a shirt before. What is that? Uh... Search financial coaching. Yeah. Yeah, that's my that's my banner. Cool. Someday I'll have a building with that on it, but absolutely not yet, not yet. Mm-hmm. And I'm also, I mean, just at the end of uh, having a building, I'm bringing on teammates that work virtually. Good. So if if anybody wants to to do the type of stuff I've been talking about, mm-hmm. if you've got a heart to help families, if you if you don't care to be on Zoom, if you, you know, single moms, they don't they have a hard time going to work. Mm-hmm. They oh, don't yeah. have to. They don't have. They don't have to leave the house to work. Mm-hmm. They can do this part time. Make fifteen hundred dollars a month. That's good you know, money. That's that, that's eight to ten hours a week, man. Wow. On top of whatever they're doing until they can do it full time, and then the sky's the limit. Just like me. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd be very beneficial because you know, so many times the kids get sick, they need something, got to go to the doctor's appointment. And if you're at a company where you only get so many points as a single mom or single dad, uh, yeah. there's only so many call-ins, you know, if you're not looking for FMLA or something like that, that uh, you get yourself in trouble with points and you're just doing the right thing. You're just taking care of your, your children. Yeah, perfect example. I just talked to a lady the other day that I'm going to I'm gonna bring on next week. She's in that exact boat. She's had like 16 jobs because she goes places. She's got four kids. Yeah. I mean, there's a good chance somebody's always going to be sick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure, yeah. Single mom, constantly running the doctors, running schools, running the groceries, doing this, doing that, sports. She can't have a job. No. Not not a not a, a nine to five factory job or something like that. No. But she could she could do this mm-hmm. at her own schedule. Yeah. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for the time, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's been a pleasure. No, it's my pleasure. I promise you that. We'll uh, we'll definitely have to do more. Yeah. And uh, you know we all, we always stay in touch. But uh, keep doing what you're doing, man, because there's a lot of people out there that need you. Really. Thank is. you. Thank you. I appreciate it, buddy.